hello guys welcome back to my channel so if you haven't subscribed my channel please click the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you can get notification about new comsub videos in today's video i'm going to show you how we can solve a micro mixer in the comsub multiphysics so in the start menu we have two options the model wizard and blank models if you click on model wizard then you have option of space dimension here you can select 2d 3d or whatever kind of problem you are solving so in this case we are solving a 2d problem and if i click on 2d then in the next step i will have option to select the physics so i'm not going to do this one so i will go from the scratch so i will click on cancel and then i will click the blank model so once you click on blank model so it will bring you to the console window where you have all the options and here we have to select everything from the scratch so the first step is that we have to select the space dimension so we are solving a 2d problem so we will click on add component and click on 2d so you can see here a 2d component has been added so the first step is to make the geometry of the micro mixer so first of all we will click on the geometry and make sure the length unit is in millimeter if it's not millimeter then change it to millimeter and make sure the angular unit is in degrees and then right click on the geometry and select the circle and the first circle should be 3 millimeter and make sure the sector angle is 360 degree and the base is center and the type of our circle is solid and then click build selected and then click on this to zoom extent and right click on the circle and make a duplicate this time we are going to make a smaller circle with 2.75 millimeter radius click build selected now you can see the two circle has been created the next step is to right click on the geometry and then go to the booleans and then select difference so the first thing we need to add objects to add so select the bigger circle and for objects to subtract click the inner circle and then select this one and select build selected so the next step is to make the mixer rod so right click on geometry and select the rectangle and this time the width is 0 0.2 and and the height is 5.25 and for y you need to select minus 2.65 and then click build selected and you can see here uh, the first rod of the mixer has been built so for the second rod we will again right click on the first rectangular and then make a duplicate so this time we are going to change the dimension 5.25 for the width and for the height 0 0.2 and this time we are going to change the y value to 0 and the x value will be minus 0 0.25 and then click build selected so the two mixer rod has been created okay the next step is to make the inlets and outlets so for that we will again click on the geometry go to rectangle so the width of this inlet is 1 and height will be 0 0.5 and the x-axis will be minus 3.4 and then click build selected and make sure it should be center so it's a center so we have successfully made our first inlet so to make five inlets and one outlet we will use a command of rotate so right click on geometry and go to so go to transforms and then go to rotate and rotate first select the input object so we're going to select this object and then we want to keep this input object and so for five inlet and one outlet we are going to use different angles 45 degree 90 degree 135 degree 180 degree and 270 degrees so if i click on build selected and click zoom extend so you can see here we have successfully made five inlets and one outlet so to extend our outlet i am going to use another rectangular command so this time i am going to use the width four and height would be 0 0.5 x would be minus 0 0.25 and then y will be 3.5 if i click bit selected so you can see here i have successfully made an extended outlet so 
now the next step is to make a union of all these so for to make union to make a union of all these objects i will right click on geometry go to boolean and partition and select the union so here i'm going to select all the objects that i want to make a union so these inlets i will select and then these outlet and then outer circle and i will click on build sub all so here i want to remove the interior boundary so again i will uncheck this one and then click build selected so you can see here we have successfully made five inlets and one outlet and we use the union command to combine them so the next step is to remove the mixer rods so for that i will go to geometry right click on geometry go to boolean and partition and then i click the difference so this time i'm going to select this object for the objects to add and for object to subtract i'm going to select these mixer rods and when i click on this build selected so you can see the mixer rods has been subtracted so the next step is to use a form union so always keep in mind that whenever you need to solve a rotatory machinery problem so always click form union and select the form and assembly and please make sure these create imprints and create pairs are selected and then the type of pair we are going to use here are identity pairs so there are different type of pairs so contact pairs and identity this time we are going to use identity pair and then just to show you that when you click build selected so this these identity pairs have been generated so the next step is to define our material i will come to material part later so first we need to select the physics and then we will define the different domains and then automatically it will ask us what type of material properties we need so so before materials we will go to physics and then click on add physics or oh, here I'm, we are going to so use a flu fluid flow and then single phase flow and then laminar flow physics double click on the laminar flow physics and the physics will be added into our model builder so you can see here the laminar flow physics has been added the second physics we are going to use is our particle tracing and then particle tracing for fluid flow double click for this physics and this physics will also come into model builder so you can see here we have successfully added the both physics laminar flow and particle tracing flow for fluid flow so i will close this one and then i will select the laminar flow physics and you can see here both domains are already selected so now we will define our material so i will right click on the material and click the blank material and based on our physics it is going to ask us two diff two values of density and dynamic viscosity so for density we are going to provide one e raised to power three and for dynamic viscosity one e raised to power minus three pascal second so that's perfect so now we will define the boundary conditions so first we will define the boundary conditions of our laminar flow so so for laminar flow we are going to solve an incompressible flow problem and for fluid properties we will click the fluid properties from the material the density and the dynamic viscosity so both values we are taking from the material and then next is initial values so you don't need to change anything here and then for wall these are the wall and the no slip boundary condition is already applied and the next step is the flow continuity and in this case we are using identity pairs and next step is that we have to define the inlet and outlet ports for inlet ports i will right click on the laminar flow and select the inlet for outlet condition i will again right click on laminar flow and then select the outlet so here we need to assign what are the inlets so i'm going to say this is inlet number one number two number three number four and number five and what will be the value so so here we are going to provide a time dependent velocity value so for, for that so for that we will click on definition we will define a function it will be analytical function so here we are going to define a function which will be 0 0.05 
multiply by t and the argument should be t and the function unit will be meter per second and the time should be second and our function values from 0 to 1 second and here we are going to change the name of our function this is a velocity and then I'll click on plot so you can see here this is our velocity function that will start from 0 second to 1 second and the velocity value will be from 0 to 0 0.05 maximum velocity so now we have defined our function so we will come to the inlet and then here we will define our inlet function so it's VEL and then parenthesis T and then close the parenthesis so now we have defined our inlet velocity for the outlet we need to select our outlet which is this one and then it should be a zero pressure and then make sure you select the suppressed backflow so now we'll move to the next physics which is the particle tracing so in this case in this case the walls are already selected make sure that the wall condition should be bounds and then primary particle condition should be none so the next thing is the particle continuity so you don't need to do anything here and then particle properties so here you need to define the particle properties so for the particle density so we are going to define a user defined which should be 2200 kilogram per meter cube and the particle diameter we are using here is 10 micron and they are the solid particle and you don't need to do anything in the charge number section so the next thing we need to select the drag force so right click on the particle tracing module and then go to the forces and then select the drag force so make sure you select the both domains so right click on manual and then select all domains then come to the drag class so make sure it should be stocks and then go to the velocity and select the velocity field spf and then select the dynamic viscosity and select the spf and for the density always choose from material select this and tick this include virtual mass and pressure gradient forces so the next step is to define our inlet so i'll right click on the particle tracing module and then click the inlet and select our first inlet so here you need to provide the release times in this case we are going to select from zero and the step is 0 0.05 and for one and then click add so replace so now our release time has been added the next step is the initial position select the uniform distribution and the number of particles per release should be 50 and then for initial velocity select expression and select here and select the velocity field so now we have defined the first particle inlet and then click on the inlet number one and then duplicate this and then duplicate this again for five times for the five inlets so now we have duplicated it for four times to make five inlets so for the inlet number two just unselect this one and select this one for inlet number three unselect this and select this inlet for number four unselect this and select this one and then inlet number five unselect this and select this one and now we have to define our outlet so for that again right click on particle tracing and select the outlet so in this case we are going to select this outlet and the wall condition should be freeze so now we have successfully defined our particle tracing module the next step is to define the mesh so for mesh uh, we need to select the mesh one and in this case we are going to use a physics control mesh and the element size we are going to use is the fine so you can see here our mesh has been generated that we can use to solve our problem so one thing which is missing with that's really important that this is a, a rotating machinery problem so we have to define the moving mesh so for that right click on our component and then click moving mesh and select the rotating domain so so first we need to select the domain so in this case we are selecting this domain which is rotating and so select this rotation type so click specify rotation velocity 
and here again click on the rotational velocity expression and select the constant revolution per minute so here we are going to provide one and then you don't need to change anything here so now our problem is fully defined so we will move forward to the study so for the study we, so to define study you click on add study or in this case we are going to use a time dependent study double click on time dependent study and you will get a time dependent study here so in this case we are going to use a time unit in second and output time we can change from 0 and the step size should be 0 0.05 and we want to stop at 1 second and then click on replace now we will press the compute button to solve the problem so you can see here our computation has been started and after pressing the compute button if you experience any problems and then you can make two changes so first one is go to the tolerance and then select the user defined and please make sure the relative tolerance should be 0 0.01 and secondly when you go down you can click on time dependent solver and instead of fully coupled you can select your segregated model so once you click that and then you click compute and now you will be able to solve this problem so our problem has been solved so first i will go to the result section and show you the velocity profile here you can see the velocity profile if i click on this button and then select the time steps that we have taken so for every time step you can see here the velocity profile of our auto mixer so the next important thing is the particle trajectories so, so the particle trajectories will be automatically produced for you if so if you don't see the particle trajectories in your result section then right click on results and then go to 2d plot and once you get that 2d plot and then right click on it and right click on it and then go to more plots and here you can see the particle tracing and particle trajectories so in this case we have selected the particle trajectories so here you can see the results of our, of our particle trajectories so we have now got uh, our particles let me show you from the start so here are the five inlets that are showing different particles uh, with the same diameter that is 10 micron but with a different color so the velocity and the number of particles uh, released per second are similar so if i click the next step so you can see the mixer rods have started rotating in the anti-clockwise direction and if i click once more then you can see our particles are moving inward and if i keep click clicking and you can see the particles are now entering and they are now mixing and going towards the outlet so we have successfully generated a micro mixer 2d micro mixer so thank you so much for watching